They've printed it. What's here? My poem in the Morning Post. Oh, it looks much better than in Christie's writing, doesn't it? This is a solemn moment, Mrs. Drew. A golden moment in a writer's life. The moment when he sees his name in print for the first time. His foot is on the lowest rung. The ladder stretches up above him, up and up to untold heights. Well, Christy, can you scale it, do you think? I heard that. Decent try, sir. I can write. I, I know I can. Cochrane said I could. Charles Cochrane? Mm. I sent him my play to read. He asked me to go and see him at the theatre. Is he going to do it? No. He said that one day he might be very glad to do a play of mine, but... at the moment, I hadn't discovered pain and power and passion. Life hadn't hit me with its full glory and sordidness. In short, my play had got no heart. I'm utterly convinced, and so is your mother, that great things will come to you in time. I'm equally convinced that what you need at present is a bread and butter job. There never was an author born into this world who didn't have to eat. As your late father's dearest friend, I should like to put a proposition to you. May I, Mr. Drew? Yes, Vicar, please. Well, I need a secretary. If you think you'd care to fill the post, I promise you I'd wink at any lyric poetry mistakenly inserted in my sermon notes. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, well, that's wonderful. I've always dreaded working in the bank. The vicar's secretary, how splendid. Then if you find you're not clever enough to be a writer, you could always be a clergyman. Hello, Christy. How's the play? I'm stuck. Oh, rotten luck. What's wrong? Is the vicar smothering your muse? No, not purposely. It's not his fault, it's mine. I need experience, experience of life. It's bad for writers to be sheltered, Robin. Look at Swinburne, Villon, Kit Marlowe, roaring and singing round the taverns of Cheapside, living and seeing and writing. He had heart, all right. Say you're ambitious. Oh, shut up, I'm talking sense. You wouldn't understand. A farmer would. It's filth that fertilizes and rejuvenates the earth. It isn't pretty, is it, Bob? There's beauty there, if you can see it. Do you ever read Kit Marlowe? No. Would he, and Shakespeare for that matter, have become the greatest poets and dramatists the world has ever known if they hadn't seen life? I don't believe they would. Life doesn't come to you, you have to go out and look for it. Stop it, Glenn. 
Now, Earth, you can't take their liberties with Frankie now, you know. When you was doing time, she got herself fixed up with something posh. <laughs> Jim Hill, since when's a real woman been posh? Um, How much, Mark? Could it be in the hurry, be? Still, there's plenty in the till. He tells the cops he spent the brass from this last job, and how could he know? He's planted it just like a dog. And dug it up when he come out, just like another dog. Oh, well, was it not worth it? I wouldn't know. Cops will always come out on top. Just says you. Meet me here in three weeks' time and say that again. Ah, oh, no, hello. Another job? Give it a rest, mate. You've been out for half an hour. Where is it this time? Bank of England? Glasgow. And if we get the stuff... You get five years. Ah, oh, nah, kid. It's a cinch. We can't go wrong. Who's we? Me and my mate. The name of Jocko. He's a Scot. Go on. He's coming in here tonight. Don't ask everyone to do a job with him. Handpicked his pose. Like me. I'm handpicked, see? Oh, well. Here's luck, Herbie. Boy, will you need it. Go on up at Lynn. I want to talk to Herbie. All right, I was going anyway. It's my ride. Don't do it. It's balmy when every cop in England's got your picture next to his heart. Oh, so what? If I get another stretch, what's that to you? I've not been in above six months and I come out. Here, yeah, Frankie, you stuck on Jim. Well, he's stuck on me, Mola. He wants to marry me. Oh. <laughs> Mother Moxon's stuck on him, too. <laughs> She'd tear me eyes out if she went to dead scared of Jim. I'm scared of him myself. That's why I got to lay off with you. Well, of Moxon. That's her over there. The one with the moon face and the double chins. I'm scared if she's stuck on Jim. I'll take you to the hospital. Here, Chuck Jim. You've got me back now. For how long? You go straight and I'll come back to you. <laughs> You'll have me in the Salvation Army next. Oh, Frankie, it's not too easy. Well, I've done it. Oh, that's rich, that is. You, straight. Oh, Go on, laugh. At least I work for my living. And I'm honest. I may not be so good, but I am honest. All oh, right, all right. I'm not ashamed of anything I've done. Sorry for nothing, Frankie. That's me. I'm sorry for nothing, Herb. That's me. Here's Jocko. I'm a topic. So long, Abby. So long. Yeah, lend us a dollar till next month. Oh, nah, kiss. Sorry, Jocko. Just a friend. All right. We'll go somewhere you haven't any friends. Come on. Don't you look where you're going. <laughs> Sorry. Never mind. It's spilt now. But it isn't milk. <laughs> May I get you another? Oh, life, it would be charmed, I'm sure. You keep your nose out of this, Olive Moxley. You dressed up lump of nothing, I you. say, you and can't. who asked you to interrupt two ladies' conversation? Making trouble between friends. Get in for me, eh? You'll wait till Jim is about this, you dirty. Yeah, absurdity, Frank. She's not worth it. You get out of this and don't interfere. I'll give you a little You look quite wet, Miss Kitchen. Wet, you lumping great seal. You peroxide him, get a cat. Naughty, naughty, now wash your mouth out. Now, Frankie, she knows you did ginger. No, please. Here, haven't you done enough? Upset in drinks and all? Well, I, I did apologize, you know. Well, that's right. You was going to buy another, wasn't you? I was, yes. Yeah. You leave that to me. No, no, please, don't bother. How about that drink? Yes, why not? I think the drink is clearly indicated. Clearly indicated? <laughs> you don't talk funny. What's your name? It's... Kit. Like a girl. Kit what? Kit Marlowe. Kit Marlowe. That's mine. Mine's Frankie. Frankie. Yeah. 
here's the old plate layer's arms. Come on. No, let's go somewhere quiet. All right. It's all the same to me. Craver Square. Lovely, Aiden. Do you live somewhere posh as well? I live in Serum Hill. My, no wonder you talk nice. Gentleman of leisure, eh? No, I'm the big... Uh, I write. What do you do? I work at the station, Buffy. You happy? Oh, I mustn't grumble. Anyway, I'm not in service. Taking up the morning tea to some old trout who lies in bed all day. When I take up the morning tea, I take it to myself. So I'm not sorry, Kit. Sorry for nothing, Frankie. That's me. Don't worry. My landlady puts herself to sleep at nights with gin. Well, sit down. Seats are free. Don't be shy. You haven't been much with girls like me, have you? Well, I'm easy, see? I'm just what I look like. Not like those inscrutables you writers write about. You make a living writing. No, not yet. I'm going to, though. I've had a poem published. Go on, read it to me. You wouldn't want to hear it? Yes, I'd like to. Well, it's called Sunset. So bowed, old dame, with heavy feet and slow, towards... Carry on. Towards the splendor of the setting sun, your poor, unworthy piece of day work done, there, by the shadows of the road, you go. The wind is quiet and the evening still, and the road so level that the younger feet sound brisk and lively on the hard paved street. And yet you walk as though you climbed a hill. Go on. That's all. Feels so nice. Do you like to keep it? Yes. I'll put it somewhere safe. Fancy you writing all them funny things. I always keep my treasures behind the grating, so I won't forget where I put them. You'll go far. I can see that. I'll take it out and read it when I'm old. And you're famous. I can't see you, old. Oh, that's nice of you. Jim says that too. Jim don't say it the way you do. Jim? My man. He's a farmer. He's a chap that strokes the fire, not the kind that puts him out. He's on the Merseyland Express, 610 from Houston. Does he know... Can I ask my friends in for a drink? Of course he don't. Jim knew you was here, he'd do me good and proper. Don't take much to make him bash a girl. He's the kind that likes it. There's some that do. Oh, well. Tell him. Jim's jealous. He has to have his own sweet way. There's no one worth a row of pins to Jim but Jim. <laughs> the firm that builds them railway engines couldn't make them go without the help of Mr. Farm and Jim. He's the one that pulls the train. The engine only helps him. Come on, sunshine. Give over dreaming of the girl he left behind you. <laughs> Stoke her up or she'll go off the boil. Say that again. Don't worry. You'll hear it said again. Next exercise it. You shut your mouth or I'll shut it for you. See that? He's threatening. Assault and battery. He's going to murder me, he is. Oh, ain't I frightened. I'm going home to Mum. <laughs> now look what you've done. Murder me. Ah, uh, you drive a man to murder. Here, what's the row? He's jealous. And she don't belong to him. Ah, start you all. Here, uh, cool down, old man. 
There's a little gentleman. It's a pity they don't teach manners in the scrub. <laughs> She's a saucy puss, that Frankie. Oh, shut up about Frankie. <laughs> Hello. Oh, Frankie, oh, Frankie, oh, Frankie that. Yeah, yeah. I'm coming here for a quiet What are you doing about Frankie? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You had no call to talk to me like that. Besides, so look what you've done to my skirt. Well, I lost my temper, Frankie. Never seeing you these days, and now the night I'm leaving, you're meeting this path again. Yeah. Let's forget about him. Let's be like we used to be, eh? All right. Who is he, anyway? Oh, he comes from Sierra Mill. And Herb treats me like a lady. Holds my arm across the street. Walks on the outside. <laughs> He'll grow out of that. How old is he? About 20 ish. He's clever, then. He writes verses. Oh, aren't you getting posh? And Herb, he calls me his white swan. His what? His white swan. Oh, love a duck, he must be daft. <laughs> <laughs> oh. What's his name? Oh, come on. It, it's Kit. Kit what? Kit Marlowe. Satisfied? There's the 915. One belongs to the Glasgow train. Oh, I know. Yeah, Frankie. Just in case. Keep this lot warm for us. I'll put it behind the grating. Yeah, it's just over a couple of hundred quid. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll hop it. Mustn't let old Jocko down. Our own secret hiding place, eh? Oh, I'll need all my time. Uh, don't do nothing silly. Uh, don't worry. It's as soft as butter and as fat. I'll come back rich. Maybe rich enough to have a go at going straight. Come on, Frankie. Give us a kiss. Well, so long. Wish me luck. Good luck, Herbie. on my face. It's Herbie's fault. That was him just now. He's come to apologize. What's eaten you? You got a poem on your mind? You know, you are strange. Sometimes I think there's two of you. One that's saying, Frankie, you're rotten. And another one that's saying, Frankie, I like rotten girls. Not rotten. Rotten's mean, vicious, and greedy. That's nice. If those baskets hadn't swamped our ship, we'd just be in Liverpool. And crawling into the pubs in Scotland Road. Look <coughs> out! No, sorry, Jim. I'm not going to overrun me signal. Even if you were telling me about that bit of stuff that's waiting up for you. Smiling. Off we go. <coughs> You'll get to London town in time to see who's walking out your girl.
Come on, hurry up, sunshine, or you'll never catch that lodger of yours. Signing off at 11.20. Well, we didn't make it in time for the old swan. Still, you're too young for public houses. Wait till you get to my age, then perhaps you can step inside and have a lemonade. So long, sonny Jim. Sometimes I wish it wasn't. Makes me frightened. Sunbathing? I was just getting into bed. Been seeing double two, eh? It wasn't ever. I swear it. Nah. We'll see. Still in Liverpool. I told you to lay off with herb. I come right back here and catch at it. But now I'm gonna make sure you do lay off with herb for keeps. Jim. I've come to stay. For keeps. What are you staring at? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Give me a drink, I'm done.
I saw Frankie in the pub tonight with Herb. They had quite a tiff. I ain't seen Frankie. Come straight here. I left the railway depot. Come straight to you. Dear, you were late in last night. Not so very late, Mother. Oh, here's the cheque for my poem from the Morning Post. I hope you're going to save it, dear. Now you have it, Mother. Please, I'd like you to. My first. Oh, how sweet of you. Oh, but lots more. Wait till I've done the play. You'll never finish a new one at this rate. Well, it isn't a new one. It's the area steps. I'm rewriting it. Sorry for nothing, Frankie. That's me. I never done it. Honest, Jocko. Kit Marlowe done it. The tall Frankie was meeting after I'd left. Oh, I, I can, I can. I can find it in a day, but I'm not the police. Your record's not so good. But I have an alibi. I've been with you. Oh, I can, I can. But then, I'm not the police. I'm thinking maybe my record's not so good either. And I'm thinking when you say that you came up to Glasgow the very night the lassie was murdered, and you say you came to do a job with me, I'm thinking the police maybe will be on the start. Ah, oh, well, I'm thinking anyway, we can't kind of do the job new. Jocko, if I'd done her in, I'd have taken all my brass now, wouldn't I? Uh, I can, I can, but I'm no policeman, I keep telling you. The police will say you done it for the money, then lost your nerve and left without it. Hey, police. They've got a daft and crazy way of thinking, bloody. I'll tell them just what happened. I don't believe you. They don't trust their fellow men. I doubt they'll have a pretty accurate description of your clothing. Maybe I can fix you up. And, uh, with a wee bit small change too, maybe. Oh, oh, thanks. I'll go back to London. I'll lay up somewhere across the river where the cops will never see me. London's big enough to hide me, Jocko. Well, it's not so small, you know. Uh, but I know London. London's big. London's big. I should go to Hampton Park.
confusing, miss. The shop shut. Oh, miss, have a heart. I'm sorry, I'm not working overtime. I've got to get home. Oh, you're the lucky one, miss. I've not got a home. I thought maybe you'd fix me up. It'll cost you a tenner if I do. Well, that won't break my heart. You're not particular? No, I'm not fussy. I can't afford to be. Try... Jackson, 7 Kingship Lane. Oh, thanks, miss. Here's your tablet. Give it me tomorrow. If you're suited. Oh, thank you, miss. I'm sorry, but... Shop, shut. Your time, miss. Thank you. So you got fixed up all right? Sure, I told you I wasn't fussy. Frank? I don't smoke. Are you doing anything tonight? I've got my tea at home. Tell me, miss. What's your name? It's Rosie. Why not meet me when you've had your tea? Oh, I'm half shy. Maybe I've got another fellow meeting me. Well, it sure came up. I didn't say I had. Oh, we could have a drink or two. I don't drink, thank you. Oh, what about a little walk? I don't. I don't walk, thank you. <laughs> walk? Where to? Oh, that's up to you. I... I'm not particular. Jack. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. How's the boyfriend, Rosie? Fine. Here, tell us about it. Ask no questions, Dave, and you'll hear no lies. Yeah, what's the matter? Why don't you let us meet him? Are we good enough for you, Mr. Jack? Come on, Dave, I'm hungry. All right, Nicholas, I'll fill you full of eclairs. Come in, Rosie. No, I'm meeting Jack. Well, why not bring his iron mighty ship along? You don't like eclairs. We bought for the Cap your Perp Logan. Read all about it. We bought for the Cap your Perp Logan. Paper, paper, read all about it. Oh, I thought you were never coming. I'm sorry. I, I was kept late at the shop. Mrs. Jackson came in and told me you'd moved. I had to get a place nearer me work. I... You aren't in trouble, are you? I've got something I must tell you. Can you take it? Oh, it depends, Jack. It won't make any difference to us now, will it? No, of course it won't. Well, first of all, my name's not Jack. It's Herb. Well, that don't kill me, Jack. Herb. Now look, don't you read the papers? Oh, not much. Except the picture ones. But did you never hear about a murder down in Craver Square? Yes. Well, Dave and Gracie talk about it quite a bit. Good riddance to her, Dave said. Uh, she wasn't all that bad. You knew her? Yes. And they've got me lined up for that job. But you didn't do it, Herb. No, I never did. I swear I never did. A fellow called Kit Marlowe done it. Please believe that. Please. What's the use of telling me who did it? Don't you realize every minute you hide away makes it so much worse? Well, if I give myself up, what happens? Can't you see? They've got a victim. As long as someone swings, well, who cares? I do, and it won't be me. I'll stay out. I've got to find this Marlowe. He's the one. I've got to find him. I hope I'm so afraid for you. 
I told you it was a secret, just between the two of us, because I couldn't keep it to myself. Well, I'll come to that no more could I. I reckon Grace has saved you from a power of trouble. That's right, Dave. Told you for her good. You never should have done. Now, listen. I've been looking up the law, see? Even if you've given no assistance to a person who's committed a felony, anyone who knows of his guilt commits an offence if they don't communicate the information. But he swears he didn't do it. And did you ever see the murderer who didn't swear he didn't do it? That's right. You know what you're doing, Rosie, don't you? Keeping information from the police. Accessory, they call it. And in the case of murder, you could get penal servitude for life. It isn't true. Oh, yes, it's true, all right. I've got it all here in black and white. Thanks, Nicholas. Uh, come here, Scar. Come here. Ask tricks. Uh, bene, grazie, grazie. Uh, grazie. That's Italian for thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, Rosie. Now, listen. That fella never should have told you. As he has, you've got to go to the police. But do you really think he would have told me if he'd done it? I... I couldn't tell the police. Not now they've offered this reward. A hundred quid? Why, even not? It doesn't do to look a gift horse in the mouth, they say. But he trusts me. Dave. Besides... He's been so sweet to me. I wouldn't call it sweet. To put you in a spot like this, I'd call it damn like criminal. Besides, he might do it again. Well, you know, he's working up to have a go at you. Or anyone. You owe it to society, that's what I say. You owe it to society. Gracie, what am I to do? You leave it to me. When are you meeting him again? Good afternoon. What time? At two. Where, Rosie? Where? In... In the churchyard, Newington. That's fine. Hello. <whistles> Don't you look a treat. Hello. I'll tell you something. I think I'll get sweet on you. Here, Rosie. Give us a kiss. No, hope. Not here. There's people everywhere. People? <laughs> well, they're not going to kiss you, only me. Oh, what's the matter? Why so ladylike? Let's sit down, Herb. I'm tired. What? I'm tired already. Crikey, we haven't even started yet. Have you ever seen the Crystal Palace? Yes. Would you like to have another squint at it? Come on, let's go on the top of a bus and catch the sun. I love the sunshine. Makes me want to hunger all the songs I ever heard till I bust myself. Oh, Rosie, this London's a wonderful sight. Ah, don't worry. The police have forgotten all about me. Yes. Yes, Herb. Let's go. Let's go now, quickly. You, Herbert Logan, have a warrant. Governor, I know who done it. Honest Governor, I know his name. That's fine. You can appeal to the gentleman and come along with us. Oh, please. I'll come. Let me say goodbye to her. She's been real nice to me. All right. We've got to move on. We have a car waiting. Well, Rosie. Looks so the outie's off after all. Here. Why not do the Crystal Palace trip on me? No, Herbie. All right. We'll do it when I've cleared myself. It won't take long. Say this day next week. Same time, same place. All right? Yes. Goodbye for now. Nice work, miss. Thanks. <clears throat>
the matter? Mm, no. Thank you, officer. Good night, sir. Now, Mr. Heal, can you tell us of any other men than the prisoner whom you knew to be acquaintances of Frances Ketchum? No, sir. Did you ever hear the deceased speak of her alleged midnight visitor, Kit Marlowe? No, sir. Never. Never. Thank you. After you had signed off for the railway depot, why did you not turn your steps towards the house in Craver Square? Because, sir, I thought Herb Logan would be there. And why did you think that? Well, sir... I knew he hung around the moment my back was turned. Thank you, Mr. Heal. No questions, my lord. Call Mr. John Craigie Glenn. I swear by Almighty God that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Your name is John Craigie Glenn. That's right. Or Jocko to your friends. Aye. You can call me that if you'd rather. I didn't mind. That's very friendly of you. Thank you. And now, uh, Mr. Glenn, will you tell the court if Herbert Logan came to Glasgow on the night in question? Aye, he did. And will you tell us why? Aye, he came to... Do a job with me. A burglary, to put it bluntly. Put it any way you like, sir. I don't mind. And you came forward as a witness, even though you are a burglar, self-confessed. Hmm. Will you tell us why? Because I'm not the man to save my skin by letting a laddie swing for somebody else. Just because you're English policemen don't get their job. I find the witness's comments on the police superfluous. I agree, my lord. Now, Mr. Glenn, is Logan not a friend of yours? Aye. He's a decent lad. And every word he said in here has been gospel truth. May one ask precisely how it is that you know what he's been saying here? Aye, you may. Then what is the answer, Mr. Glenn? Perhaps I can provide the answer for you. The answer is you both agreed upon the story you would tell in court. Aye. Aye, that's right. In this emergency, we both agreed we'd tell the truth. One final question, Mr. Glenn. Am I not right in thinking that at least on one occasion, if not more, you have been convicted in the past of perjury? Maybe I have, but no this time. Regrettably, I cannot share your confidence. I'm telling you the truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Oh, you heard me well, I did. We had a pint or two together many a time. But as I tells his blooming lordship, if ever I see a man look murder, it was Herb that night. Oh, old Frankie would have laughed to see your name in headlines, eh? I'll tell you something. Herb is for the drop. When that there lawyer fella gets started on him, he hasn't got an open owl. He's a right terror, I'm telling you. Now, Logan, you admit that when you told the police that you never visited the house that night, you lied. I put it to you that your statement that you went to Glasgow to commit a burglary is false as well. No, sir, it isn't. I put it to you that you murdered Francis Ketchum, that you panicked, and that then, by chance, found your way onto a Glasgow train. No, sir, I never killed her. You admit that you quarreled with her in the public house that night? Yes, sir. Then, presumably, you went round to Francis Ketchum's house and said, I'm very sorry I was rude. Yes, sir. I did just that. Remarkably magnanimous of you, wasn't it? And then, no doubt, this non-existent midnight visitor, this figment of your fevered mind, Kit Marlowe, doubt as he dropped in and murdered her. Yes, sir. Kit Marlowe, Logan, was a poet of considerable genius who flourished in the days of Queen Elizabeth. And although, no doubt, his morals were in tune with those licentious times, one hardly thinks it likely that his spirit would return to Earth to visit Francis Ketchum in a tenement in Lenton Town. 
And yet, without one single solitary shred of evidence, that is what you're asking the jury to believe. That Francis Ketchum died from strangulation at the hands of someone who doesn't exist. But he does exist! I swear he does exist! Kit Marlowe does exist! Take him back. Mr. Hall. <laughs> Yes, sir, Humphrey. My lord, members of the jury, it is not for us to consider the possibility or even the probability that Herbert Logan murdered Francis Ketchum. Our sole consideration must be whether on the evidence the charge that Herbert Logan murdered Francis Ketchin has been proved. In my submission, it has not. <laughs> Herbert Edward Logan. Members of the jury, are you agreed upon your verdict? We are. Do you find the prisoner, Herbert Edward Logan, guilty or not guilty of the willful murder of Francis Ketchum? Guilty. And that is the verdict of you all? Yes. Prisoner at the bar, you stand convicted of the crime of willful murder. Have you anything to say why the court should not give you judgment according to law? No, I've never done it. I've never done it. On my oath, I've never done it. No! Oh, yea, oh, yea, oh, yea. My lords, the king's justices do strictly charge and command all persons to keep silence while sentence of death is passing on the prisoner at the bar. Upon pain of imprisonment, God save the king. Herbert Edward Logan, the jury of your countrymen have found you guilty of murder. The sentence of the court is that you be taken from this place to a lawful prison and thence to a place of execution and that you be there hanged by the neck until you be dead and that your body be afterwards buried within the precincts of the prison in which you were last confined for your execution. And may the Lord have mercy upon your soul. Amen. Oh, I should have seen that one. That makes us quits. Fag. Oh, I'll let sit down. Have I got enough to read? Yes, sir. I can't seem to take it in, though, sir. I gather you've not been sleeping too well. No, sir. That church clock keeps me awake. That girl of yours is called again. Do you still refuse to see her? Yes. I see. All right. I'll tell her not to come here anymore. Did she send those? Don't you like them? Not a sheep. All right. I'll see her then. Good lad. makes it worse. But why did you do it, Rosie? Why? Things people say. Got scared. I don't like 
that you didn't do it. And you're that afternoon in the church, huh? Yeah, I'll say it was. Still, you got your hundred quid. I haven't touched it. Keep it all. Don't be your petition. Yeah, you should have kept a quid or two back for the wreath. I don't. I know it's all my fault. I... I love here, cut it out. I can't stand it if you... Here, take her out. Take her away! Take her away! Whatever happens to you, I'll always love you. Although I did not kill Frances Kitchen, I was in her room, which I have described above, after Herbert Logan left that night to catch the Glasgow train. It's signed, Kit Marlowe. Well, Emsley? What is an evidence? The Home Secretary can't act on that. No, I'm afraid you're right. Of course, you've always been convinced that Logan didn't do it, haven't you? Yes, always. Still, you had too good a case. Hmm. Why can't the fellow come forward? Oh, they never do. Probably someone with a place in life to lose. How is that petition doing? Fine. Well, that and this between them might carry some weight. Maybe. I never slept a wink last night. And when I did, I dreamt of her. I'm off me grub and all. Pity you ain't off the beer. You turn it in. I only tell the judge what I've seen. You ain't the only one that sees things. I seen her one night before she copped it. With a fella. And it weren't Herbert Logan either. And you never told the police? I don't like publicity. Don't like to see a fella swinging for a job he never done. If I told the police, it wouldn't help him then. You might know with this. What's that then? Eh? A petition, that's what. Here. You sign. Right here. Eliza Sams. Be all right to put me mark? Yeah. Here, yeah, come on, boys. I want you to sign this petition for Herbie Logan. Here, hey, come on over here. Logan, I've just received this communication from the Home Office. I'll read it to you. The Home Secretary has advised His Majesty to commute to penal servitude for life the sentence of death passed on Herbert Edward Logan. going to take me to Monte Carlo, ain't you? What's the matter, Rosie? You've been back in the horses and done it all. Get you down. But I've never done it. I'm innocent. Look here, Herbert Logan. I won't punish you this time, but if you don't behave yourself, I'll... But i never done it. I'm innocent. Will you be sensible? Sir, I am innocent. But maybe so, and it may not. In any case, it's no concern of mine. 
My job is to point out to you that even when you've done your 15 years and your case comes up for review, you won't get out of here unless your conduct sheet is pretty clean. Right, sir. Prisoner! Right turn! Quick! Stella Drew wants watching. He writes poetry and prose. I'm going to tell the British public it's a first-class play. And then he's found to be a flop. best for you. I love you. I know what's best for me. I don't want anything else. Lovely. Such a wonderful sense of freedom. What's the matter, darling? Mary, I want to marry you, but... Well, that's one. I don't deserve such happiness. Perhaps you don't. But I do. may get sore taking all my prison meals in one. Well, eat it up and take your tummy by surprise. Herb, will you get a job, all right? Mm, it's not so easy. 
prisoners don't take the knock inside. It's afterwards. I've saved a bit. The laundry doesn't pay me bad. When we get married. What? Well, you wouldn't want to marry me. Why not? Well, how'd you like it? There goes Rosie Logan. Her old man's just out of prison for murder. It's not what people say. It's what I know myself. Grand. That's what you are, Rosie. Sorry, Logan, but we have nothing for you. Come again next week. I've heard that for a year and more. Look, uh, since I come out, I've only had one job, and that didn't last Why because not? they got to know about me. I have a wife and kitty. They sacked her when her boss found out about me. You've got to give me something. Mr. Logan, we're doing all we can, but we've no power to make employers give you work. To move. That's good. That's very good. Your face is character, my friend. I'll paint you. Come tomorrow. No. I'll paint you when the russet leaves of autumn fall. Come back six months from now. Excuse me, girl, but do you live here? If any artist can be said to live, I do. Why? Do you like the house? I wouldn't say I like it, but I know it. Everybody does. For many years ago, a girl was foully done to death in my own room. That's why I live here, brother. There's nothing like a murder on the premises for keeping down the rent. Forgive me. I must return to work. Remember, when the first leaves fall, then you and I will give the world a masterpiece. Meantime, I've a railway poster to complete. Goodbye. A railway poster. I'll give Frankie the night Marlowe done her in. It was hidden in the room in Craber Square. That was 16 years ago. Well, there's no one left there since except a crazy painter broke. He wouldn't see a pot of gold if it left out of the hole and clipped him one. How would you get it? Mm, I can't ask him for it, can I? No. Don't do it, please. If you get caught, they'll send you back to prison. Then what will become of Jack? Well, it's him I'm thinking of. He's got to grow up strong and healthy in a decent home. If the money's still there, it only wants picking up. I'd just be collecting my pay packet after 15 years of breaking stones.
Who's there? Evening, Logan. I'm Detective Inspector Benstead. Remember me? Yeah. It was you that picked me up. What do you want? I've been checking up on you at the Labour Exchange. I had a talk with the Borough Surveyor. He'll give you a job. Go and see him tomorrow morning. It's true. I wouldn't have believed it. Of a copper, wouldn't you? I've got a wife and kiddies, same as you, Logan. Good night. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Good night. I, when I saw him at the door, I nearly died. <laughs> so did I. Yeah. Open it. Wonderful <laughs> Tomorrow we'll take a look around Park Lane. What's that? It looks like a bit of verse. So bowed, old dame. Ah, it doesn't mean anything. So, bowed old dame, heavy feet and slow, towards the splendor of the setting sun. A poor unworthy piece of day work done. There by the shadows of the road, you call. Fill Jack's bottle, will you? Milk's hot enough now. I'm no one's slave. All I want is to be happy. Always be happy if you can, I say. Well, then there was a real set to. He started shaking me and was just going to lamb out at me when I run out of the house. For good. Are you sorry? No, I mustn't grumble. At least I'm honest. I may not be so good, but I am honest. I'm not ashamed of anything I've done. Sorry for nothing, Millie. That's me. Sorry for nothing, Millie. That's <laughs> You have just Hello. heard the first part of the Can't Aerial you watch them? Famous play by Christopher Give me the Brooks. bottle. What name did he say? Christopher Brooks something. It was the Times. Adapted for broadcasting by the author. The second part follows after an interval of ten minutes at 7.40. Here, Rosie. Look here. The area steps by Christopher Drew. Well, that's him. Kit Marlowe. What makes you so sure? Well, that's just how Frankie talked. It's him, all right. I know it is. Have you got the area steps by Christopher Drew? Oh, no. That's a very old play. It's out of print. Anything by him would do. Uh, we have some of his poems. It's a newly published volume in the collected works. It's only just come in. Damn it. Great reckoning and a little room. It's a line written by Shakespeare about a fellow dramatist called Marlowe. Marlowe? Where can I find out more about this bloke, Drew? He's got two columns in Who's Who. Who's what? Who's who? It's a kind of record of successful people, written largely by themselves. Ah, Drew Christopher. Born, educated, Grant College, Sarah Mill. Vacations, plays, poems. Address, High Grove. The treasury that gave us Shakespeare. The treasury that gave us Shaw. And, shall I say it? Yes, why not? He's given me a box for the first night of his new play. <laughs> the treasury that gave us Christopher Drew. Yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, and those with their elbows on the table, I give you the toast of Christopher and Mary, coupled with the toast of Christopher's collective poems. Christopher, 
Mary. Ladies and gentlemen, and those with their faces in the fruit salad, I thank you for your friendship on my own behalf and Mary's. Though deeply grateful for the fame and, to put it bluntly, cash my plays and books have brought, the things I value most seated around this table now. My wife, my children, all of you. Bob, Annie. Yes, Bob and Annie. When I look around and see you all, I think how lucky I've been. And no man, least of all myself, is worthy of such luck. There's a candle there for every one of Daddy's books. Just think of writing all those books. Just think of reading them. If you won't shut up, I'll make you read them one by one. Come on, Dad, no cheating. Blow them all out with one huge blow. Come on, then, all together. Night, Father. Good night, darling. Excuse me, sir. A man came to see you. He was hanging about the garden. What sort of man? A rough sort. Didn't like the look of him. Give his name? Logan. Herbert Logan. He said he'd call back later. If I'll see him, if he does. That's likely to be him now, sir. I'm Herbert Logan. Who? Don't you remember me? No, I'm sure we've never met. No, we've never met before. But I've been looking forward to it. It's kept me going thinking that for 16 years. 15 of them in jail. Mr. Logan, would you kindly tell me just what you've come to see me for? You were Kit Marlowe, weren't you? The only Kit Marlowe I know of. Died in the reign of Queen Elizabeth. I heard that at the trial, thank you. Frankie told me all about you. Frankie? Who's Frankie? The girl you strangled down in Kraber Square 16 years ago. You were Kit Marlowe and you murdered Frankie. Mr. Logan, I'm afraid your imagination is running away with you. I heard your play on the wireless. Sorry for nothing, that's me. That's what Frankie always said. I found out other things as well. You were 21, just what Frankie said. You went to school in Sarah Hill, just like she said. And she also said you were coming in that night. You're in. I know you are. How dare you come here talking like this? As an author, I'm accustomed to being pestered by lunatics, but this is too much. Will you go at once, please? Otherwise, I should be obliged to call the police. Oh, you call the police. I'll give them all the proof they want. You mean this story about the girl being in my play? All authors, Mr. Logan, find their characters identified with people they never knew existed. I was 21, 16 years ago. So were several thousand other people. I went to school in Serum Hill because I lived in Serum Hill. What the people do, you know. I hate to say this, but you run the risk of being certified. Now, who kindly go? I'm mad, am I? Or perhaps I was to think you'd come forward now. What killer would? You're clever. Frankie said you were. You've got all the answers, Pat. I admit I could never prove you were Kit Marlowe, but I know you were. And so do you. I swear it. As God's my judge and yours. One day he will judge you. One moment. There's just one point about your case that occurs to me. I seem to remember that there was a woman who... Let's 
see. Yeah, here we are. Olive Moxon. She testified that a certain fireman on the railway, uh, Mr. Heel, could not have been with this, this Frankie at the time she was murdered, as he was with her. I don't understand. An alibi, Logan. If this Olive Moxon was in love with Heel, that alibi might not have been too sound. Worth considering, do you think? He'd undoubtedly be guilty of misprision of felony. The prosecutions of that are very rare. But the cove in your play would be absolutely ruined. Letting an innocent man rot in prison rather than stand up to a justified disgrace. The whole of society would be after him. The papers, the fellows in Parliament. No one would have the slightest mercy for him. The disgust of his fellow men would follow him to the grave. Yes. That's how I imagined it would be. Now, Harry, give the pubs a mister. If he can't, we'll stick to lemonade. I'll never touch a drop till I become a driver. Well, so long, Sonny Jim. So long. Be careful if you can't be good. Are you Jim Heal? That's me. It's Logan. Herb. You clear all. There's no one wants to mix with you. Questions I want to ask you, Mr. Heal. Who is it? It's all right, Olive. My missus wouldn't like you hanging about here, Logan. Olive? Olive Markson, is she your missus? I'm sorry, I can't help you. I know who done it, Jim. I found him. Turn off that noise. that got to do with me? I know who was with Frankie that night. A writer named Drew, Christopher Drew. He was with her, all right. Well, even if he wasn't, he must have known that. You got no proof about this, Drew. Well, the cops would laugh at you. Oh, Detective Inspector Benstead don't. Who? The cop that picked me up. He listens to me. Always gets a bit too sentimental when the nicks your coppers does. Well, supposing Drew had been with Frankie. Just supposing he knew who it was that done her in. Why, when he got a force it out of him, see? Then I got what I want. I'll tell you something. That fella Drew will talk one day. I'll make him. Sure as I'm standing here. You're wasting your time, mate. Drop it. Here. Yeah. No fist bang. Still fond of your wallop, eh? Yeah, when I can get it. I'm a scavenger, not an engine driver. I'll say it's been tough for you. Pretty awful if you never done it. There's only one thing kept me going. The certainty that one day I'd find the real murderer. Look, mate, I always thought you'd done it. Well, what else was I to think? But I want you to know that I don't bear you no malice. So what say you if I try to fix you at the depot with a job? There's more dough than that than street sweeping. Railway, man, mm -hmm. huh? I could use some extra dough for... Yeah, when you get enough to buy yourself a pint, why, you can forget all this. All gone and done with. Tell you what. I'm going to see Charlie now. He's the foreman. I'll speak to him about you. So we'd better meet up at the old wild swamp. Oh, no, no. We can... I'm never going in there till I put myself right before the world. I'll walk in there again one day. I come to think of it. Why not come along and see Charlie with me? Why not? I'm going down the depot. I'll uh, take a look at the boiler before I go.
jumpy long. You get fixed up all right. We can celebrate with a wet at the plate layer's arm. Come on. Well, that's not the way to the depot, is it? We go by the tunnel. Saves time. This year, I bet. This one, I like my pipe. So you killed Frankie. Frankie's dead. I warned you not to rake her up again. And now I'll just make certain sure you doesn't. But even that's not good enough. Detective Inspector Benstead said lots of people, when they're dying, confess to murders they never did. I've got to get corroborated proof, he says. But how would you get it? From Mr. Drew. I'm seeing him tonight. I phoned him at the theater. He's rehearsing a new play. I said I'd got to see him. Something new, see, that concerned him. Get a taxi, says he, and wait for me outside the theater. We'll go somewhere quiet. Somewhere quiet. Aren't you going home, sir? It's getting very late. Oh, don't worry, sir. People are saying it's the best thing you've done. Good night, sir. Now sit down. The streets are free. It was Jim Heald then. Yeah, it was. He confessed in the presence of witnesses. Does that clear you? 
No, not yet he doesn't. I need proof. I need a word. Just one word from someone else. Who? Oh. You, Mr. Drew. Jim Hill said he killed her because she was with another man. All you've got to do is to say it was you. It was you, wasn't it? Logan, you've accused me of murder. Now you're accusing me of being with an unknown woman in a room that I've never seen. Haven't you, Mr. Drew? Look. Look around. Can't you hear her? Can't you hear her laughing the way she did? Sorry for nothing, Frankie. Didn't she say that to you? Didn't she? If you're not going to talk, I'll bet there's something here that will. Frankie had a hideaway somewhere. Somewhere where she kept her valuables, like. Under the boards, maybe. Didn't you never give her something, Mr. Drew? I bet I could find something if I looked. Have you read Heel's confession? Yeah, indeed I have. I've got a copy. Can I see it? Sure, I'll get it. Them funny things. I'll put it somewhere safe and read it when I'm old. And you're famous. Is this what you were looking for? This poem you wrote? What's it got to do with... It's proof you've been in this room before. alone. And that's how it's always going to be until just you and me, till you'll want to tell the truth. I was here that night. But I could never make you understand why I've let you suffer like this. I was young, ambitious. My life then was so sheltered, narrow-minded. I'd not only myself to think of. And then, once I'd started, it became more difficult. Worse, worse. I know I can't make it up to you, but you can have all the money you need. Money? I don't want your money. Logan, it's my wife and children against yours. I've gone so far that I can't go back. I'm not going to speak. You're not going to? I'll do anything else you ask me, but not that. Now you'll feel some of the things that I've felt for 16 years. In the end, justice has caught up with you. I wonder how many of us would have had the courage. Hello, brother. Is everything okie joke? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. I, I was... I say, when the first leaves fall... Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> and thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> You're a terrible female, Rosie. Crying when they're going to top me. Crying when I'm going to prove I'm innocent. I bet you I have hysterics when I get me pardoned, love. <laughs>
Time coming in tonight's classic thriller, Accused.